ABC Listen. Podcasts, radio, news, music and more. Joe Biden shows no sign of stepping aside as the Democratic Party nominee in the US presidential race. But he is under pressure to show he has the physical and mental capacity to defeat Republican nominee Donald Trump and serve another term as president. With his potential replacements staying quiet, it leaves his vice president, Kamala Harris, as the most likely to step in if Biden steps out. So who is Kamala Harris and could she beat Trump? Today, we speak to Julia Manchester, national political reporter with The Hill, a politics-focused newspaper in Washington, D.C. I'm Melissa Clark, in Canberra on Ngunnawal Country and recognising other custodians. This is ABC News Daily. Julia, Joe Biden called in to MSNBC's Breakfast News program to try to flush out anyone who might want to push him aside as the Democrats' nominee. I'm getting so frustrated by, by the elites in the party who they know so much more. But any of these guys yeah. don't think I should let them run against me. Go ahead, announce the announce president. Challenge me at the convention. So has that challenge been taken up by anyone? Well, we've seen a few uh, Democrats call on him to step down from the Democratic ticket, but we haven't seen anyone challenge him yet. It seems like all the people who would be potential challengers, whether that's Vice President Kamala Harris or some of the younger governors, they have all fallen in line behind Biden saying he should continue to run for president. Now, we always knew this election would be tough, and the past few days have been a reminder that running for president of the United States is never easy. But the one thing we know about our president, Joe Biden, is that he is a fighter. He is a fighter. And he is the first to say, when you get knocked down, you get back up. So no one's challenged him, but there is a growing list of congressional Democrats who are calling on him to step down. The latest one was New Jersey Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill, who just a few hours ago here in the U.S. announced that she thinks the president should step down. And he's hosting NATO leaders in Washington now, delivering a pretty forceful defense of the alliance. But that was another teleprompter event, wasn't it? One where he had some support in speaking publicly. How has that gone down? So his opening remarks at NATO were very strong. He very articulately expressed U.S. support for Ukraine. But make no mistake, Ukraine can and will stop Putin. So it was a strong moment for the president, but like you said, it was a teleprompter moment. This was a moment that has been rehearsed, that was very predictable. Uh, So the moment we'll really be watching out for is actually coming on Thursday when the president will do a press conference with members of the White House press corps and those covering NATO. That will be very closely watched because over the past few days, we've seen tensions rise between the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, and members of the White House press corps over transparency over the president's health. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a second. Eight times or at least once in regards to the president specifically. Hold on a second. you should be able to answer by this point. Wait, no, 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 no. A little respect here, please. Every year around the, the president's physical examination, he sees a neurologist. That's three times, right? So I am telling you that he has seen a neurologist three times while he has been in this presidency. This issue is still bubbling away because of that disastrous debate for Joe Biden on CNN. Um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare, 
Thank you, President. Um, but Biden is ploughing on. He'll hold that press conference. He wants to stay in the presidential race. If he does change his mind or someone can convince him to change his mind, is Vice President Kamala Harris the best candidate to replace him? You know, she would seem to be the likely one at this point, and there's a few reasons why. First of all, you know, if she were to become the Democratic nominee, she would automatically get the millions of dollars the Biden campaign has raised since it's the Biden-Harris campaign. If it were any other Democrat, it would have to be a complicated process of transferring that money. So it's much easier with Kamala just as the heir apparent. On top of that, a number of congressional Democrats have signaled that in the case that Joe Biden were to step down, Kamala Harris would be the best person to finish the job of the Biden-Harris administration. There's also the question of, you know, optics. Kamala Harris is the first woman vice president. She's the first black vice president. and She's the first South Asian American vice president. So, you know, pushing her out or leapfrogging over her in some way would be bad for a political party that prides itself on inclusivity, gender equality, and diversity. And you've seen a number of these other potential contenders, like California Governor Gavin Newsom, for example, push back against the idea that Kamala Harris should be looked over. Can you tell me a bit about how Kamala Harris got to the position of vice president? What was her pathway to politics and to such high office? Yeah. So originally, I mean, she was the attorney general of California, obviously a very big, influential democratic state. During her time in the Senate um, as the junior senator from California, she had a number of notable, very impressive moments. You know, when now Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh was facing accusations of, you know, sexual harassment, sexual misconduct. And during, you know, his nomination hearings, Harris very skillfully crossed examined him. I'll repeat the question. Can you think of any laws that give the government the power to make decisions about the male body? I'm not a, I'm not a thinking of any right now, Senator. And that very much put her on the national radar, and she was seen as this rising Democratic star. And then in 2020, well, in 2019, I guess I should say, she decided to run for president, but that presidential race didn't go so well. In fact, she suspended her campaign in November before any of the Democratic primary contests had even begun. But by that point, she had sparred with Joe Biden on the debate stage. But ultimately, um, you know, they seemed to smooth things over and uh, Biden chose her to be his vice presidential pick. Can you explain to me why she's been unpopular as vice president and why there is concern from some Democrats about her ability to take on Donald Trump in a contest? So I think there's a number of reasons why she's been, you know, unpopular. First of all, her defenders would say that, you know, as a woman of color, she is under more scrutiny than the average, you know, white male politician here in the U.S. She is held to a very different standard. We've seen Republicans very much make her an attack point for them. You oftentimes hear Republicans make this claim that a vote for Joe Biden in 2024 is a vote for Kamala Harris, uh, essentially talking about the fact that President Biden will be in his mid to late 80s by the time he finishes a second term. So it's unclear what that would look like. You know, on top of that, there's been, you know, a few moments with Kamala Harris, public moments where She's been criticized for remarks she's made, nothing controversial. You know, her approval ratings, disapproval ratings, very similar to Biden's. But no doubt she has been made the scapegoat for Republicans, you know, in their messaging. Do we have any idea from polling about how she would go head to head with Donald Trump? Is there any sort of quantitative data we can point to to give us an idea of what that potential matchup could result in? So there was actually a CNN survey released last week that showed Harris polling more closely with Trump than Biden did. 
in that poll. Harris still lost in a hypothetical matchup to Trump, but she was polling better than Biden. And I think that's key because people in favor of a potential Harris ticket would say that, you know, that gap could be closed between now and Election Day. Uh, There's enough time. But at the same time, there's other polls that shows her not polling so well. You know, I think there's going to be more data collected in the coming weeks because I think people are just starting to wrap their heads around this idea really at this point. While this is happening on the Democratic side, it seems that Donald Trump benefits from not having the intensity of attention of the world's media on him. What's he doing as this plays out? Well, Trump is in a very interesting situation because Trump, as we know, loves to be the uh, the center of the attention. He (laughs) loves media attention and he sort of relishes, I think, sometimes when it comes to negative media attention because he's able to lash out at his critics in the news media or in the Democratic. Democratic Party. But look, his campaign has been working very hard to play this smart. They've been keeping him more quiet than usual. Um, He did do a sit down interview with Fox News's Sean Hannity. But in general, he's been much quieter than he normally is. And that's because a lot of Republicans in the Trump campaign are saying, let the Democrats essentially cannibalize themselves. The Republicans will meet next week in Milwaukee for the Republican National Convention, where President Trump will announce his vice presidential pick. That will definitely signal a maybe a bit of a shift in the news cycle. But right now, they want this you know, arguably the most negative news cycle of Biden's administration, let alone his political career. They want this news cycle to continue as long as possible. Meanwhile, the radical left Democrat Party is divided in chaos and having a full scale breakdown, all because they can't decide which of their candidates is more unfit to be president. Sleepy, crooked Joe Biden or laughing Kamala. With all of this focus on President Biden's physical and mental health, you know, his clarity and control, is Donald Trump being held to that same standard? You know, it's interesting because Donald Trump is only three years younger than President Biden. But when you look at the two men and look at them on television, how they debated, it's no question that Donald Trump appears to be, you know, appears younger, acts younger, has more energy. But at the same time, Democrats are, you know, have criticized the media here in the U.S. for not talking, you know, as much about, you know, the falsehoods, quite frankly, that Trump voiced during the the presidential debate. So there's definitely, you know, some accusations or claims that there has been a double standard and how these two men have been covered recently. So where does that leave the presidential race now? Do you think Donald Trump is the favorite at this point? I think Donald Trump was the favorite before the debate. And I think the debate, the Biden campaign was hoping the debate would stop the bleeding for them, but it only made the wound even deeper. So it's hard to say what's going to happen between now and November, you know, going back to 2015, when Trump launched his first presidential campaign, there's been so many twists and turns in U.S. politics. So anything can really happen. But as of now, Trump is leading in a number of major battleground states and including states that have traditionally leaned more Democratic, including uh, Virginia, which is just across the river from where I am in Washington, D.C., New Hampshire, Minnesota, New Mexico. These are all states that Democrats are concerned they're falling behind in. So that sort of tells you where the Trump and Biden campaigns are. But I don't think all hope is lost for President Biden. You know, he needs to be more aggressive and prove to the American people if he is, in fact, fit for this job. He needs to show that and do more unscripted events, be more transparent about his health, put himself out there more. And also there's other outside factors that could impact this. If inflation significantly drops between now and November, that plays in President Biden's favor. So there's a number of different factors going forward. But right now, Donald Trump is the favorite. Julia Manchester is a national political reporter with Washington, D.C.-based publication The Hill. This episode was produced by Oscar Coleman. Audio production by Sam Dunn and Anna John. Our supervising producer is David Cody. 
I'm Melissa Clark. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. You can find all of our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening.